So what are we doing? <laughs> These have graphs in them. Okay. So we're, we'll just open this one and see how the graphs look. Mm -hmm. It should be around uh, five days. So they shouldn't be capped yet, but they, they might be starting. So it kind of depends on the age. So, but so we'll look at a graph, the graphs I already did. Then we'll set these two, two up. We'll have to shake frames and knock queen cells down. Yeah. And then we'll get those ready for to put our graphs in. Mm -hmm. And then once we get that done, then we'll go out and we'll pull frames of larva to graft. So I would say we got pretty good take. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven misses out of 60. So those aren't bad, they're fed real well. You can kind of tell by the royal jelly. So they're already capping them or are capped. So they aren't gonna eat very much royal, more royal jelly because they're pupating. So we got 53 in that one, right? Sure. Tearing one down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, 53 and 53, 106. So these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shake the frames. So these are queenless. I just made them up mm -hmm. about four days ago. So we'll shake the frame, shake all the bees off, knock any queen cells down that they've started. Mm -hmm. And then they shouldn't have anything that they can make a queen cell out of. So we'll put them back, put them all back together. We'll give them feed, and then uh, we'll go out and find us some larvae to, to uh, graft. You know all those queen cells? Yeah. So these are the ones we got to knock down. The ones they try to make. What I like to do is set it up to where this got a lot of pollen and pollen in it. We'll put that right where I'm going to put the grafts, mm -hmm. and we'll leave that void. A lot of those bees will fill that void. Yeah. And you want your cells well fed, so we will keep them stimulated with plenty of feed. Are you okay with like walking us through what what all you put into this? Yeah. Um, basically, um, when we were pulling nukes, I usually have extra brood left over because I make everything into singles and then I pull the nuke back out for customers. So a lot of times you have extra brood left over, a frame or two. So all those double or those screen boards, I'll carry those on the truck with me as I'm making my nukes, and I just throw the extra brood in there and then I bring it back here and set up a cell builder. So um, otherwise I'd be putting this in other hives or um, we also will uh, take a lot of that brood and condense them down into singles, like two or three frames of brood in each one and then come back and put a queen cell in. So the resources left over from our nukes that are in singles that we're pulling out for customers, um, we just utilize it. So. Where do you get all the bees? Are they on the frames? They're on the frames. Okay. And then if I need more bees, um, I'll shake extra frames mm -hmm. out of other hives mm -hmm. into them. So, yeah, because you need a lot of bees too, so. Yeah. Yeah, and the bad thing is if you miss one of these, they will, uh, you'll, your take will be a lot worse because, uh, They'll go ahead and finish that queen cell. And then the other problem is that queen cell is going to hatch probably before you pull your grass out. So then yeah. she'll hatch and annihilate the rest, of your, the rest of your cells. And then you got a, a lot of time invested in a uh, 
in one queen and a lot of resources. There's my pollen. See this one here, I put a frame of foundation in there. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, this one I just had room to put it in there, I didn't have the extra frame. Okay. Um, but if you put a frame of foundation in there, that'll, uh, they'll put their wax on it versus on your cells so you won't have those crazy looking uh, yeah. cells that are all waxed together, you know? Yeah. So by the end of it, when you're using all the grafts, do you give them a, a cell or a you... So usually what I do is I can get about two rounds out of these before they're kind of done. And then what I'll do is I'll take, uh, I'll take like four frames of four frames, put them in my four frame room, put a queen cell in there, and then let, let them uh, raise up. Because at that point, they're pretty much used up. Um, you've used up the, the young nurse bees, so, um, or if I have a mated queen that I've caught, an extra, couple extra mated queens. Mated queens are really good because, you know, you get a fast turnaround and the bees are usually pretty, pretty amped up to have a queen at that point, so. All right, so let's go out here and see if we can find some larvae to graft from. All right. Okay, how do you select your breeder? Um, so we select from our own stock, but we also um, buy artificially inseminated breeders from Corey Stevens. Mm -hmm. um, we've got two of them here. And then this is one um, that I marked last year. It's one of the ones that I wrote, raised off of my Minnesota Hygienics um, that did the best. So if I, if I find hives that are doing exceptionally well, carrying low mite loads, you know, making lots of honey, doing really good. They go through my whole process, my, my how I treat, you know. Uh, we send bees to California, so, um, you know, they have to make it through that, that uh, California trip and all that. Um, I select for the, from those, and this one here was one of them that um, was a super exceptional. I marked it, come back from California, looked awesome, so I pulled her, and I want to you know, breed off her. Mm -hmm. But then we also uh, incorporate some uh, some of the VSH stock that Corey Stevens has. Yeah. So we've got two of Corey Stevens and one of mine this year. Um, I've got two more Corey Stevens coming in um, probably this week mm -hmm. or um, next year. So yeah. but we'll see what we can find here. So these two are the Corey Stevens. That, those are peach trees. Mm -hmm. And this used to be my dad's big garden. And uh, I've turned it into my mating yard. <laughs> All right, so what are you looking for? Looking for three-day-old larva. Here's the queen right here. So this and here's the one that I selected from my own stock. Do you mark all your queens? No, I do not. The breeders from Corey are marked, but most of the queens in my operation, I don't mark, so. Um, just never have, um, I don't know. I usually can find them pretty easily, so. And I requeen every year, so. Um, except for my breeders, I'm not usually looking for the queens. Oh, there she is. Actually, what are they doing? They're stinging her. 
There's some weird video. I have no idea why they're doing that. For some reason, they have decided. Where'd she go? I think she's still here. Yeah. Come here. Well, there's a perfect example of you don't always understand why. I don't see anything wrong with her. For some reason, they decided they weren't happy with her. So, we're not going to graft off that one. <laughs> we're going to leave that one alone. So what, what would you do now? Are you just going to leave um, it? I'll just mark on there to check it. And I may not have a Minnesota hygienic breeder. So... So basically, I'll just write something on here, basically like a check mark in a circle. Yeah. So I'll know when I come back to it to check it. I've already got several graphs off of this year. So um, if they do end up superseding her for whatever reason, um, it just is what it is. Yeah. Um, the, uh, a lot of times you have the, the AI breeders, they want to supersede them for some reason. Um, with her, I'm not for sure, but bees communicate under pheromones and stuff. She may be getting low on pheromones, so they're they're going to try to replace her. Mm -hmm. um, honest with you, I don't know either, yeah. and that's the best part about beekeeping. Mm -hmm. So, which one is this? This is another Corey Stevens. Okay. Um, this one has been a little bit weaker than the other one. But they were st they still made it through winter. So we overwintered these okay. these breeders overwintered here mm -hmm. in these boxes. Now they had a, a second box on top of them for the winter. But um, see anything on that? Want to look? Sure. What am I looking for? We'll look for the queen. She should be marked. Yeah, she's right here. See her? No, I don't see her. Oh, yeah, there she is. So we know where she's at. So that's another AI breeder from Corey Stevens. And these are handy dandy bee brush. You don't want to shake your, your grafting frames because yeah. you'll cause the larva to yeah. roll over. some grafting do a little bit of a competition and maybe just walk us through a little bit about these stands that you have here uh, so this one here um, I actually got in a barn by it's actually made by Man Lake um, that one I built myself um, just out of some scrap wood and it just basically the frame just sets up against it and then you've got a little tray for your um, your bar um, which I typically hold mine in my hand, so yeah. I've got a tray right here, but I, I just like having it in my hand because yeah. I got more control, so, but to each his own, but yeah, so this one's um, made by Man Lake, and they actually still make them, and then that one I just made myself, so. Can you, have you tried both of them? Yeah, I used that one up until this year. This this one I got in a barn by, bought a bunch of equipment, so. so you like that one more, or this one? I'm trying it, yeah. Um, they both work just the same. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about this one is that you can adjust it. Yeah. Um, that one's kind of fixed. Um, but I've grafted a lot of queens with that one before I got this one. So, okay. so we're both using the Chinese grafting tool. That's today. right. I got mine right here. Uh, what are the other ones? Have you used any others? Uh, yeah. So I've got, I've got my little bucket of fancy stuff um, there's the German I'm not a fan of it um, and the other one I've I've tried is the uh, the uh, master grafter Corey Stevens really likes this it's made by Pierce 
Um, and I can graft with it and I get good acceptance, or I don't get as good acceptance as I do with the Chinese grafting tool. So um, I've just gotten to where I use the Chinese tool anymore. And uh, you know, you buy several of them to get one or two that actually are good. So, um, but we'll, uh, we'll do some grafts here. We'll have a little competition. And then uh, the only other thing I did this year is I put a calendar up on the wall. Um, so I've got my three breeders on it. And then like when I grafted, um, obviously it's pretty empty right now just because I was out of town last week. So I wasn't doing any grafting. But so when we get done today, we'll go out and put them in the cell builders and we'll mark when we started them. And then 10 days later is when they should we should be pulling them out, so. Okay. Um, you ready? Yeah, I think All so. Right. Sorry about the noise, guys. Uh, I have an addition going on. So we're adding another 20 foot onto the building. And he's kind of loud. Maybe you'll have a better take than me. I hope so. <laughs> so then we'll cover them up with a, a damp towel just to keep them moist. So what are you using these things for? Um, we're still making splits, um, and then I've got, uh, so out there where the breeder queens were, all those four frame nukes are all mating nukes. Um, so um, I just put queens in them last week. So about the time that these would be coming out, I should be pulling queens off of those um, to sell, to replace queens in yards. Um, just whatever I need, just to I have extra queens on hand. Because um, inevitably you always, you always end up with queens that fail or, or uh, whatever, so. But yeah, we're still making, we're still making splits and stuff too, so. Um, it's, uh, they will get used. If you could guess how many graphs you think you do in a year? Um, every year, so last, every year it's getting more and more and more, so. Are you still trying to grow, or are you going to stay up the amount of hives that you have? So I'm trying, or my plan is to get around 1,000 hives this year. Where are and you at right now? Somewhere between eight and 900. And then, depending on, um, there's just a lot of factors, but probably hover around there for a while, build up some equipment and stuff, and then uh, maybe go up to round two eventually. I don't know. We'll see. Kind of depends on how the industry goes. So, kind of depends on how uh, help goes. So, my youngest son has decided to stay home and go to a local community college and uh, work for me so exciting and also we'll see how it goes whether he likes it or not so so right now is it only you yeah yeah i have some temporary that help that help from time to time um but most of them have uh their own jobs or their own bee business. Um, so like tomorrow, Kyle Day's coming down. He's gonna help me for a couple of days. Um, he also retails some of my nukes, so 
he's coming down to help me pull some nukes and then he's going to take nukes back with him so so my first round I did in the end of March so do you graph like every week or less than that uh, it kind of depends on how how much I can get done in a week. There you go. So when will you come back and check those? So I'll check them in the morning and I'll fill the feeders back up again just to keep them well fed. Um, so I'll check for acceptance in the morning and we'll kind of know because mm -hmm. yeah. um, they'll start drawing out the wax and start packing royal jelly in there. You really don't know what you got until they have them capped and really you don't know what you got until you've actually candled them because um, even though they accept them Sometimes the larva, when it goes to pupate, will fall down in the bottom of the cell or, or it gets a virus or, you know, something. Um, so we w really won't know exactly what we have until we candle them, but we'll, uh, I'll keep track of it and I'll let you know. Okay. So I'm going to do something here. Um, that one's super strong, so I don't want to put the frame of brood back in there. I want to put an empty frame. Got a couple. These two here, I put queen cells in on the 16th. I don't know if they took or not, so we're gonna find out. 16th of last month. But we'll put that frame of brood down in here. Looks like maybe they hatched. I don't see anything yet. She could be down on the bottom though too. If one of these are queen right, we'll put that frame of brood in there and pull an empty frame out. Don't see anything in that one. This one's queen right. Doesn't look very good, but it's got eggs and larvae in it. So where's the queen? This one here was a, a weak one that I requeened. There ain't a whole lot to it. Where's she at? Well, we're gonna pull this empty frame out of here. You wanna grab that frame of brood? Put that frame of brood in here because they definitely need some brood. That one's pretty weak. <laughs> 